Welcome back to Equal Time Soccer. We have a huge Sioux Falls City show for you today. We're in the, mi the midst of kicking off all the summer leagues we have in the Upper Midwest. Today, we're going to talk about South Dakota's team, baby. Before we get started, I want to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Hi, Mom and Dad. Uh, your support makes all of our work possible. And this summer, we're driving all over to random places like Sioux Falls. Uh, we're covering the women's game in a way that helps grow it, and you help make that possible. So you can always go to the Patreon app. You can go to patreon.com slash Equal Time Soccer and support us. Thank you for that. Enough. Let's get to the good stuff. I want to welcome returners uh, Jordan Tenpass and Taylor Thomas, and then also two newcomers to the 2024 squad, Avery Clark and Lulu Marino. Thank you for joining me all. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we will we'll try to get a little from each of you today. Um, we've got a lot of folks from the club, and it's exciting. Um, last year, uh, I, I had to re-listen to the show from last year, which was tough to listen to your own voice that long. But I remember it was a trend. I mean, players were saying about being recruited to the squad that Joe, uh, I don't know if it was just wearing them out, but he had amazing recruiting calls. He said they were hours long. Um, and so for the newcomers, Lulu, I'll start with you. Talk about what was the recruiting process? How did you end up? Um, how long did Joe talk to you on the phone? <clears throat> I'm actually, this is going to be my third season with this team. So I'm yeah. not a newcomer. Yeah. Oh, my uh, bad. My mistake. My bad. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I can talk about my, my initial recruiting process when I first yeah. came. In, yeah, um, yeah. It, it was a phone call conversation. I had initially sent my highlight film to him. And um, they reviewed it, gave me a call back, and it was probably like, I don't know if I would say it was an hour long conversation, more of just like a brief conversation mm -hmm. about what the program is about, what their goals are, their values are, and kind of like what I was looking forward to um, getting out of the summer. So it was mm -hmm. it was quick conversation, but from what I heard, it pushed me to go and go ahead and pursue with mm -hmm. like playing with this team. What was the hook? I mean, in terms of like, you know, you were recruited, obviously you go through it for the college process for a long time, maybe with club teams in the past, but what, um, what was it that drew you or like, led, you know, like, I'm confident this is a place I can, cause you know, you're not a South Dakota player. You're, it's, 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 you're going out into the prairie, you know, what was it that hooked you in? Um, honestly playing in the sport for so long, I didn't mind where I was going to end up, but what gave me like the hook mm. was the connecting, the networking that this club has with Joe, um, the director and, when the, uh, another thing was when they were spoken about the values of the club and kind of what they wanted to do with the club overall, like especially in the future, mm -hmm. um, it became a big interest of me, especially because I feel like they're wanting to help out the youth in this city. And I feel like being a part of that would be something special for me. So I thought it would be kind of good to just go ahead and play with them. Mm hmm. So Avery, you you are a new. I mean, look, I hope most of my notes aren't as flat as that. But Avery, you are a newcomer. You're 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 mentioning before rubbing it in. You did not have a soggy blizzard as us Midwesterners did uh, this week. You're in Texas, so just talk about that. How you got connected, you know, and by way of Tennessee, you know, what made you join South Dakota's team? Yeah, for sure. So Taylor and Emily. Emily is really good friends with my mom, and I knew that this summer I wanted to do something different with soccer and somehow it came about Joe and um, he texted me that he was interested. He was like, let me tell you what we're like about this club, what we can do for you. And I was like, you know, that might be fun. Like, I don't want to just be in Tennessee. I was in Austin last summer and that was 110 degrees all day. I can't do that again. Yeah. Um, and just a family connection. So I, my parents already knew, like, you're good. You'll be good if we send you there. Mm -hmm. um, he actually flew out to watch one of my games, uh, mm -hmm. TCU. And that automatically, I was like, what the heck? He's flying out to watch a game? Like, mm -hmm. this is cool. Mm -hmm. um, and we met for coffee, and he had film on me, what he sees for me in this club and what I can do for this season. Um, and that just made me feel really appreciated and special mm -hmm. and wanted, mm -hmm. which is a big thing as a soccer player with mm -hmm. um, doing something new. Um, and yeah, just the values of the team and what he told me and um, the causes and the stuff that they stand for with, especially with female women soccer players and how they're pushing this mm -hmm. um, so much to grow our brands. I think that's really, really cool. And I just, I'm excited to be a part of it. And mm -hmm. it didn't take much to convince me, but mm -hmm. What'd you know, like first thought about South Dakota, like what'd you know 
about South Dakota when they, cause it's like, you know, whenever someone comes to Minnesota, I always ask them like, what'd you know? And like, they'll just say, you know, that I don't, that I don't know how much people know about <laughs> flyover States as we are up here. Um, I honestly, I was like, oh, it's going to be like mountains and like, Ooh, I mean, a little bit, kind of. It's like prairie. Okay. I thought, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I, I don't know much. Yeah. I'm excited uh, to learn, but mm -hmm. I was thinking mm -hmm. beautiful nature. Mm -hmm. Lulu, had you had a connection to the state at all? Like, had you been there before no. playing for the squad? Yeah, no. The first time I ever came was to come and play here. And I was, you know, I never knew that South Dakota was an actual thing. Sioux Falls is a thing. But when I came here, it was really- You didn't know it was a thing. You, like, you yeah, didn't even I, think, I, I don't know, even know. Is it a state? Like, I didn't really think about it. But when I came here and like South staying here over the summer and then coming back, I, I really grew to like the place a lot. So Avery, I think you'll enjoy it as well. Cause I'm from Texas as well. So if I liked it, I think you'll like it as well. Yeah. Awesome. Wait, wait, Washburn, uh, shout out to Washburn where uh, Lulu plays. Um, Jordan, your returner, you talk, you've been on the team experiencing the growth and seeing where, you know, started as obviously a team in WPSL, now also a formally announced team. We're hoping to be a pro team with those aspirations. I'm wondering for you personally, just what you've gotten out of playing for the team and how it's kind of affected your version of what you see as your path, like forward or what your goals are in the game. I mean, I never really thought about playing soccer like farther than college. It's every, if it's every soccer's dream to do so, but like I just never saw that as like one of my capabilities. And then getting reached out to from uh, Joe was eye opening, and getting to spend the last summer with them was um, it was a lot of fun. Not only that, but it was also really good for my growth. And I saw that in my college performance this past year. And mm -hmm. so, um, it made me want to come back because I learned a lot and I grew a lot just in one summer. So I can't imagine what one more would do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Taylor, you're another returner. Uh, in terms of talking about last season, the team was very competitive. It was a really close end of the season race with kind of traditional powers, the Minnesota Thunder and Salvo. Um, you're right behind them. And I'm just curious, you know, looking at last year's team, what were the strengths of the team on the field? I watched a couple games, but from your perspective, what were the strengths on the field? And then carrying forward, what do you think, you know, the team has to continue with this this season and build on on the field? Yeah, obviously last year was really fun, especially coming off our first season where we were just kind of crossing our fingers, hoping to win games. Um, and then we were like, wow, like we can do this. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like it kind of went from, oh, let's cross our fingers to like, let's go win our conference. Like, let's win this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think last year definitely brought us a step closer to that. We had a lot of like awesome newcomers, just like Jordan, who came in. I think our like, defensive line and just our ability to build through the lines into our attack um, was a lot better than our first year. Um, just a lot more, I would say, connected on the field through different positions, mm -hmm. which was really nice, which I think like all of us girls could feel together. And I would just say our off like the field chemistry. I feel like all of us girls say it like we truly just feel like we're a family and like we basically do everything together like all summer long and we just enjoy each other which makes it so much easier to enjoy like playing um and competing against each other with each other and that is what makes it so exciting for this year because I definitely think this is going to be the most talent that we've had so far we're bringing in so many amazing new people we have um mm -hmm some you know pieces that were foundational for us in the past that are coming back and i'm honestly like the most excited i have been like throughout my last like three years of this like for that reason so awesome lulu i wanted to hear from your perspective one of the things the club shared um it's a nice thing about the club in terms of you said it priorities in the community priorities aside from just being a good soccer team um and it's nice for us too because the club does a very good job of sharing all that and it, and it makes it easier to make connections and and follow the game you got to visit you were visiting dakota alliance u11s right <laughs> recently yes. and i know i've been to your games i mean i've been to other games where you see what it means to see players looking up to you guys so i wonder for you you talked about that's one of the benefits of being at the team what do you get out of those type of engagements and kind of um you know what was it like visiting the u11s um, it was honestly great just to see their excitement when I like showed up. 
Um, some of them didn't know who I was, but some of them did through our camps that we held during uh, past summers. Sure. So whenever they saw me, they were like, oh my gosh, like you coached us and we watched your games and all these other things. And like just seeing the initial enjoyment and excitement in their faces brings joy to me because it shows that like, not only like when we go out into the community, like obviously putting an impact on their lives, but just seeing how much we mean to them. Like it means a lot to us as players because we're impacting them on on levels that we didn't think that we would. Mm -hmm. So it was really yeah. nice. Yeah, it's it grows every year. I mean, you see that with different um, the way that kids and and people get to interact with the teams. You it it grows the game. You know, year after year. Um, apologize. I mixed up. I mixed up. Apologies to the Washburn soccer program. I mix it up saying Lulu was playing there. Jordan, that's you play there, but. Um, we follow a lot of D2 soccer on equal time um, with the Northern Sun Conference and then just Minnesotans making their making their games known. You were in the D2 National Championship last game. You almost, by the way, had a run in with Minnesota State Mankato, um, but Central mm -hmm. Missouri beat them. I, for some reason, I think I remember Central Missouri is called the Jennies, which is like a female donkey. They are. I, why yeah. I remember that? I mean, gosh, I'm sick. But um, regardless, a really cool run for you. And I just wanted to ask, you know, sometimes we talk about maybe what are some misconceptions or like assumptions about playing D2, maybe that, you know, that you hear or like, you know, you want to bust and then what's it like to mix it up in the summer with these players coming from all different, you know, level of programs and teams. I mean, I think honestly, you can only put like a name on division one, division two, division three, and I so much like, mm -hmm. I know the D ones that, are not as good as some high-end D2s or some D3s that are better than D2s. It kind of just crosses over a lot. So, and I see, I mean, like I said, or like you mentioned, we went to the national championship and unfortunately lost, but we still made it there. And I see us better than a lot of other D1s. We'll get a chance to play some D1s this um, spring. So it'll be kind of cool to see where we line up with those teams. Mm -hmm. But as far as crossover in the summer, I think that's kind of what helped my development a little more because um, at my old school, I was just kind of around my leg level of D2 teams and then getting to cross over and play against D1 players with mm -hmm. D1 players, higher end D2 players and all different levels. Honestly, you learn a lot by maybe what their coaches taught them and then bringing it in or just you learn like going against D1 forwards I'm better as a defender because mm -hmm. I'm against higher end players and they aren't um, my level now. So um I, although like i don't think you can just like say like oh you're d2 like it's whatever like i still think that it was a lot um more beneficial to play against and with better and like you get higher end players in the summer overall mm -hmm. it like we bring it here joe and the team bring in a good group of girls um for their skill level it's not just kind of whatever so it's a lot of fun getting to play against them and play with them and learn from them and mm -hmm. grow because of them yeah, it's a good equalizing showcase because if you know when you're playing against um, some of the teams you do in the WPSL, they're filled. I mean, we I I follow um, Minnesotans who play D1 in the college in the college season, of which we have over a hundred. You're playing a bunch of them um, in your league, and so yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, you're you're getting the experience, if not you know for like an early season game where maybe you get to play some of those bigger programs. Um, it's fun for us to make the connections too and get to kind of see. Um, see how players play across those different places. Um, Taylor, I wanted to ask, I mean, one of the things we'll see when we reveal the whole roster later on, a lot of new players this year, of course we have some newcomers. Um, it's such a quick season. It's a really condensed, uh, it kind of, it, it's it's really fast and intense for all of us, like like following it, like, geez, it's already done, it's two, two months. Um, how do you, from a player's perspective and like a returner, how, have you in the past and like, how do you work on building chemistry quickly and being able to gel, especially like this year, you'll have quite a bit of new, new players. Yeah. I mean, in the summer, it's always a challenge just because of how like fast everything goes by. I think one thing our club does really well is we don't just start when it is summer. Mm -hmm. We have honestly been meeting with each other for, about like a month, month and a half now over Zooms every like two weeks just to kind of get to know each other, get to know, mm -hmm. you know, our standards, what the club stands for, what, you know, 
we're expected to bring um, day in and day out, just so we don't have to go through all of that when we get there. It's just so right when we get there, it's, you know, we're ready to rock. And I think that's like super beneficial, makes it way more professional than a lot of other like WPSL clubs, um, which I really appreciate. And I would say once we do get there, I think we do a fantastic job of doing a lot of off the field things um, throughout the summer. And those things are obviously done by us players, just, hey, let's hang out. Um, but a lot is done through the staff too. They provide us so many opportunities, just like Lulu mentioned, to work in the community. But during those times, like we're also working with each other and really getting mm -hmm. to build those bonds. Um, but no, I would say it starts for us, it started like early February mm -hmm. and it goes through all summer. And mm -hmm. yeah. For the rest of you, so we talk about that a lot, and I guess I, I'm curious to know a little more. I mean, it's really kind of basic. It's just probably making the connections with each other and learning a little bit, so you have, like, some foundation. But, like, it made me think of, like, I don't know, college orientation groups and, like, who I did do wonder, like, who facilitates stuff like that? Or, like, is it natural for players? Or do you also have, like, you know, is Joe in there, you know, making it awkward being, like, the dad in the group? Or, like, how do you, you know? How, how does it go? Like, do, you, do people set up little like quizzes? So you're just like kind of sharing two truths and a lie. What do you do? I know it is very much kind of like a classroom. Like, you can Hi. like Joe, Joe is on, Dale's on, most of like all of our staff is on. Mm -hmm. And basically every single meeting we have an overview and different things that, you know, we want to get through and talk about. One of those things was literally icebreakers. And so we were put yeah, in little breakout rooms and literally just sharing like fun mm -hmm. little facts with each other. But it's those moments that like we get the bonds going, we get to yeah. laugh with each other. Um, and then we bring it back and we have those times where it's fun and uplifting on all of that. But then it's also like, all right, here's what we stand mm -hmm. for. Here's how we're going to try to play this year. And mm -hmm. so it is very like, teacher friend at the same time type yeah. of deal. Uh, for, I wanted to ask for, I mean, maybe Avery has an idea. Maybe she has some like old uh, high school or college rivals in, in the Northern Conference, but I would assume more for, for Lulu and Jordan. I'm curious for you two, after playing um, last year or even more than that with the team, who do you most want to beat in the WPSL this summer? Lulu, you go first. Who do you most want to beat? Um... Honestly, it'd be ideally to just beat everyone this season. I feel like we were very capable, came real close um, to meeting those standards. And I feel like these standards this season are definitely going to be set higher, mm -hmm. but for a reason, because we know our capabilities. And mm -hmm. especially like Taylor mentioned, we're bringing in a lot of talent. So just mm -hmm. holding up our standards and taking care of business, I believe that mm -hmm. this season we can aim to try and beat everybody. So there's no specific mm -hmm. team that we want to beat. It's just across the board good answer she she sidestepped that that she went right to the yeah to the good answer look at that joe they're gonna win every game jordan how about you give us some bulletin I mean, board material <laughs> i always did have to agree with Lou, but at the same time you just have those teams that like were just singers last year that mm -hmm. you know it would be it would feel really good just to be able just to give it back to them this year i think honestly one of those teams is minnesota thunder and salvo mm -hmm. are two of the big ones that come to my mind they're just like Two games that it would be really nice to just take on this year. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking the bait on that, Jordan. That's exactly what yeah. I wanted. Clip <laughs> that. Put it on the uh, Salvo and Thunder. Play that in the locker room. No, I mean they, you. Of course, they know they're the. They finished above you. You want to beat them this year. Um, and I did want to ask you guys too. In terms of, there's something really cool about the the growth of the game is including like supporters groups growing in the women's game because um, it's just, that's a newer piece of that side of our game culture in North America. So your crew, the army of the falls, they were recognized by the independent supporters Col uh, council for people who aren't that type of nerd. Uh, those are, those are my dorks at the soccer bar. These are my people, but it is the umbrella organization that really um, is both a, a a kind of semi-governing body for supporters groups, but also it's a place where really like voices are heard and they push back and actually really will make a league, you know, like change their mind. So having it in the women's game is really cool. The only other one in our area that we talk about is uh, Ravon Tillette of Minnesota Aurora FC. So want to give a shout to them. I don't know if any of you had any thoughts on that and just kind of like 
that piece of women's soccer growing that it's like, you know, like everybody wants to support it. It's not like it's just youth girls coming to watch the team. Like there's also, it's just supporters culture. I don't know if any of you had any thoughts about army of the falls and just that growing too. You know, for me personally, seeing first, just like the creation of that organization, um, when our, you know, team first started, it was kind of surreal to me because like mm. our team had nothing to do with them, like starting mm. it. It was just like, oh my God, like <laughs> we have a supporter team, like what? Mm. And I would say like having their just like commitment and support, like every game, like day in and day out, like mm. they put so much effort into us and it does not go unnoticed or unappreciated. And every single year they are trying to just like, make it more fun like mm -hmm. bring things for not only us but like the other fans who come and they like are just outdoing it every single time i'm so excited mm -hmm. to see all the things up their sleeves like this year and to honestly just like feel that like love and support and passion from them and to just know that they are all in just like we are it's like the best feeling ever <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it, it, it was a lot of fun it definitely attracts like i joked about it uh, I've joked about it before where it's like not all uh, kids can grow up to be the actual players. Some of us grow up to be supporters or like nerds who make podcasts about it. So it's like you do see the kids at the games draw into that too. And that's a whole other piece of what makes it fun. Um, one thing I missed, Avery, I did. You have a Minnesota connection, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. Your mom was a softball player at one of the schools we talk about a lot, Minnesota State Mankato. I forget what it was called maybe when she played there. Um, but your dad was an athlete too and big into like softball baseball from your parents like was that in minnesota that overlaps like you got to choose like i didn't play little league i i was playing soccer were your parents ever pressuring you did you play growing um, up um yeah so my dad played football and baseball at minnesota state mankato mom okay. played softball um and i was i grew up in california just my dad's job moving uh -huh. from minnesota to california and they just put me into everything, honestly, basketball, mm -hmm. softball, volleyball, mm -hmm. um, soccer, all that. Mm -hmm. And my mom really liked me playing softball. My dad liked me playing uh, basketball. Uh -huh. But with volleyball, instead of diving, I would stick my foot out and kick it over. <laughs> softball, I was just like, I need more action. This isn't enough yeah, for me. I get it. Yeah. Basketball, I was just like, I like soccer better. And mm -hmm. so they never pressured me. They were mm -hmm. always just like, all right, mm -hmm. we'll just go be the best. Go do it. Yeah. Whatever you're going to do, do it. <laughs> That's your ability. I was like, all right. Um, yeah, really supportive always. Mm -hmm. They're, yeah, I wouldn't be where I am without them. So. Right on. Well, yeah, cool, cool Minnesota connection. Um, yeah, love that. Shout out to the to Minnesota State Mankato. Um, <laughs> lastly, just from each of you, before I move on to to the olds with me, um, I want to know who your favorite player is. Avery, start with you. Who's your favorite soccer player? Um, my favorite soccer player. Yeah, don't laugh when I say this. <laughs> Neymar. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna put. Why it is it laugh? Do you do people laugh at you when you say it normally? What? Yes, because I mean, amazing he, soccer player, also yeah. gorgeous. Love it. Two and one. <laughs> you know. Yeah, look, I, I, there's no problem. Thing. I mean, and yeah. I feel like he's definitely been snubbed in a lot of stuff. Well, look. I mean, he rolls around on the ground and whines a lot, but I mean, he's still really good at soccer. No, you know, and <laughs> I don't mind that. You know, yeah. he's passionate and he's trying to get a foul, and that's fine. You that's know. Right. And yeah. I would do it too. Passion for the game. So yeah. shout out. He's yeah. probably one of my favorites. He's he's in he's 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 cashing nice checks in Saudi right now. How about, oh, yeah. Jordan, who's your do you have a favorite player? I mean, not necessarily, but I guess if I had to choose one, it'd probably be Messi. Okay. Sure. I like, I just like watching soccer in general. So when I watch, I don't really watch for like a certain yeah. player, but it would be Messi. Yeah, I mean he's always fun to watch. Taylor, how about you? Yeah. Do you have a favorite player? Oh, goodness. I love Alexia Puteas. I think she's amazing. Yeah. Also, just like for me, like in the midfield, obviously, like Lindsay Horan, she's just a beast. Mm -hmm. I would love to just play like her all the time. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lulu, uh, who's it for you? Uh, I'm agreeing with Jordan there. Lionel Messi, all time yeah. fave. Yeah. Right on. How about a woman? Is there, How about a woman's player? A woman's player? I'll go off the national team, uh, Crystal Dunn. Yeah. She's probably one yeah. of my favorites. 
put her in midfield, Emma Hayes. Quit, quit bringing her in the defender. I'm sick of it. And I say, I'll say it every time someone says. That's what I say every time someone says Crystal Dunn. Um, thank you all so much. Really excited to follow the team. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna drop you guys out. Do an ad read, and then we'll bring in the folks who uh, who aren't kicking the ball. Um, thank you so much. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank right. you. Thank you. Let's see how I can manage this. Thank you all for joining. I'm going to give a shout out to our sponsors. First, a shout out to Pence Homes. I live in a Pence home and have many friends who do. Nate Pence is a great supporter of the local soccer community, including an owner as an owner of Minnesota Roar FC. Pence Homes realtors Nate and Lydia are fantastic and can help with buying, selling, remodels, and everything else. Find them on social media at Pence Homes. We are also brought to you by Modest Brewing somewhere over my shoulder, uh, pointed to the wrong shoulder every time. Modest Brewing, I love the inclusive merch they have, and they have amazing beers like Modest Dream Yard, which I serve a lot at Blackheart. Modest Gear gets me a lot of props, probably tips when I'm working, so I love that. Um, try their many THC seltzers and all their many delicious beers. Thank you to Modest for your support as well. Let's bring in the, the old people, I jokingly said, and Haley, I would I would have to disclaim uh, as an as an exception to that. But no, jokes aside, thank you so much to the off the field side of the kickoff. We have the new CEO, Sherry Myers, Joe DeMay, who does the technical directing and coaching uh, as the head coach. Haley Fisher, who is a former player, first ever signing in the history of the club, I believe, and now a coach. And we have Emily Thomas, um, uh, one of the founding owners and uh, continued uh, owner at the club. Thank you all so much. First, we got to kick it off uh, with Sherry Myers. Sherry, I got to chat with just a bit before we started getting all the technology going. Um, but Sherry, for our followers, just talk about, uh, you said some, something very cool. I mentioned it in the context of Joe as well. There are not that many people who have your job getting to be a full-time um uh, director of a women's team, like a women's professional team. Uh, too few people get to do that. What was your background like leading to get to this uh, fun adventure at Sioux Falls City? So prior to coming to Sioux Falls City, I had a long career in business and most recently worked for a real estate investment company and have led mission-driven organizations in the past. And one of the reasons that I took the leap to come to Sioux Falls City was because I could take all those skills that I learned in the corporate world and really bring them all together in order to advance women in an environment that was supportive, but super competitive, which feeds me as well. Like mm -hmm. our athletes want to be the best, but you know, those of us doing the other work of the club also want to be the best. So being able to bring all that together to promote women's sports at such a crucial time for women's sports in general mm -hmm. really seemed like a no brainer to me. Yeah. What's your history like with, with soccer in general? Were you, is it something you played growing up or what, how do you, what's your connection with the game? So it would be as fan and as ultimate soccer mom, I would say. Go. So um, a lot of work on the sidelines in that cold, rainy weather, watching a kid mm -hmm. play soccer. And, mm -hmm. you know, part of what also brought me to Sioux Falls was to help create the environment that I wish my kid would have had mm -hmm. as she kind of progressed through the different levels of soccer. So in uh -huh. really making that environment inclusive and welcoming and very athlete focused mm -hmm. that's well very cool that's yeah, yeah very it's nice to see and it's that's the the growth um of the game like lift the rising tide lifts all us up so i mean it definitely helps it's helped equal time have things to talk about right we can't just talk <laughs> about you know streams at a on a cell phone at field level you know we need we need people with ambition and so it makes it fun exactly. um, talking about the context you said i mean getting in at the right time absolutely i mean there is business uh growing at an exponential rate and w in women's sports soccer specifically in the u.s mm -hmm. angel city of the nwsl just i think the valuation is 180 million dollars they're an outlier but even so like you know san diego i think got valued at 60 something so the valuation and the 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 level of investment is going up really strongly people are realizing 
um, that there's an, this is a, a smart place to make the investment. And now um, you guys have intentions of being pro. And so maybe specifically for Sherry and Emily, I wonder, you know, you look at that, you're not transitioning to $180 million uh, business overnight, right? But you're on the pathway to, to leveling up the way you operate as a business. Yep. What do you tangibly do in the meantime? Cause you, you're not, it's not all at once. You have to try to build up to that level. And I'm curious. So like maybe Emily, you could go first and then Sherry as well. What tangible steps do you take? Like, how do you go from, from, uh, from a plucky, great uh, summer league team to something bigger? Well, um, I think just having Sherry here <laughs> yeah, that's as a, big a full-time CEO is obviously a step in the right direction. Um, we, we have a lot of aspirations. We, we want to fill our whole organization with top, top people like what, like we have with Sherry and Joe and Dale. I mean, everybody, I can name everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Haley now on the, on the coaching side. Mm -hmm. So it, it is not overnight for sure. Um, we are drinking from a fire hydrant <laughs> with everything that, that we want to do. Um, and we're just, we're just doing due diligence to get it right and not just do it for the sake of doing it, but we're really trying to be um, purposeful in how we do what we're doing, surrounding mm -hmm. ourselves with the right people and just really focusing on doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. Sure, you being kind of like the biggest, I mean, it, biggest investment and kind of like signal of intent of that transition too. Um, what in your early start, cause it, you haven't been on, you know, in the role too long. I do wonder, you know, how do you start to build out? Well, this is what, cause it's kind of new. It's a, it's a new role. You're trying to build new structures. Like, how does it start? What do you, how are, what's kind of helped you get your feet under you in terms of like your, your role in this, in this transition? Yeah. So two things, one, um, the, leadership of the organization, we got together and we built out a strategic plan for what it's going to look like for the next two, three years and exactly what we need to do. And that's so important. There's so many organizations that really think that strategic planning is a nice to have and it's a need to have. And so building that out with everyone and hearing what everyone's you know, hopes and dreams were for the organization really helped us be able to plan how to get there. One of the things that we do very purposely is we don't say if we say when so it's not if we go pro it's when we go pro and it's not if we win a national championship it's when we win a national championship and mm -hmm. so that strategic plan is what's going to get us there mm -hmm. and the second thing that's been really crucial is having emily as a great partner um her ability to like just download her brain into mine and for me to be able to translate that into what it needs what we need as a business and as an organization has been crucial. So it's been really fantastic to be able to work with another woman and be able to just really like hand in hand, we're taking this organization forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the, I'm curious for, and, and maybe um, Emily and this could, could be actually any of you, but I'm wondering we, we had an interview immediately after you announced the pro intention, because that was an exciting thing for us to have someone in the in the area looking at that as a stated goal. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, that really was kind of immediate. And now you've been planning into year three. And I'm assuming some of the conversations are a little more tangible in terms of what the organization leveling up looks like. So I'm just curious for like all the partners, you have tons of local partners in terms of like sponsors. And I'm sure you're also talking to people about you know, investing or being bigger parts of the club, how has the response been from specifically like the Sioux Falls City community and your partners in terms of your signaled pro intent? Yeah, I mean, I it, it was, it's been very well received. Um, it's been really fun sharing that with everyone. Um, we've got exciting, um, you know, we're being, actually we've talked to our local um, TV station, mm -hmm. they're going to, they're going to broadcast us. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's a lot of interest. There's a lot of excitement and the people that we've talked to um, have just really loved to hear what we're doing 
-hmm. and how we're doing it and most importantly our why mm -hmm. and i think um i think that is the key behind everything is is our why and we don't all have the same why but when we put it all together mm -hmm. it is what is helping us you know get to where we want to be eventually mm -hmm. and that is pro like you mm -hmm. said we did we did our loi um we have mm -hmm. announced we will be pro um and we are excited for that yeah. I love it. Joe, you're in year three. I, I talked to you a bit in kind of planning this, just, you know, curiosity of how the interest in teams that are so um, successful publicly like this, like the recruiting gets better and better, probably. I mean, I saw you all over the place. I'm pretty sure you guys like maybe just made the pink shirts because you wanted everyone to know when Joe was at a game. But like, um, I was like, well, Joe's over there. I definitely know Sioux Falls City's in the house. So good work on that. Um but you've done a lot of recruiting. I think you said something about, you know, visiting a huge amount of, of the teams um, at the high level of, of college soccer. Talk about how the recruiting's evolved, how your conversations have maybe gotten easier or maybe just, you know, I would also think another layer when you're a team that's saying we're going to be pro. There's a different, maybe different uh, intrigue from players. Yeah. I mean, first of all, nobody wanted the pink shirts. I picked the pink good, shirts, man, yeah. and then everybody wanted the pink shirts. Okay, <laughs> Joe's putting it on the record. Joe's putting it on the record. On the record, Haley, am I lying at all? <laughs> <She's> put, <laughs> don't put her. Don't put her on the begrudging. Line. I heard begrudging credit there. Um, so yes, but yes, the pink shirts are uh, very, very recognizable. Um, I, you know, you asked the question before to Emily and Sherry about what steps of the is the club taking, and I think that's the biggest one yeah. right now. Um, year one is. Taylor mentioned in, in her segment, um, it was, hey, let's cross our fingers and try not to suck the first year. Um, I mean, I think we did a good job. We knew that we were going to be good. We didn't know how good we would be. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we pleasantly surprised ourselves in the first half of the season. And then we had some challenges that hit us with the schedule and different things. And it, we kind of like tailed off uh, a little bit. But I think we all believed, OK, this could be good. Um, and the owner owners made a big investment um, from a video standpoint to go out and help us find players to elevate the roster um, in year two. Uh, and then this past year, we said, hey, we could really use in-person scouting. Nothing replaces in-person scouting. Video is great. But being able to see people, as Avery mentioned, being able to connect with them face to face um, is huge. Um, and so I put forward a proposal um, and a schedule uh, with a budget and they both were like yep go do it um so i got to see 15 of the 64 division one teams that made the tournament yeah. i got to see 10 of the division two teams that made the tournament uh, and it dwindles when you get to d3 because those tournaments are so regional right mm -hmm. um but i still got to see a number of the teams that made the division three tournament as well um so as avery mentioned making those connections with players um, and being intentional about what we do. So there's nobody on our roster who's who's random. Um, we might yeah. get a random contact from a player who we didn't know about, but then we do a deep dive right. into them. And then the last step of that, I would say, and Haley can attest to it, is it's a collaborative process. So we share the video and we get everybody's feedback. And I ask for their feedback to be independent because I don't want someone to say, mm -hmm. oh, I like this or I didn't like this. And that influences somebody else. Oh, I should say that I do or don't like that. Um, the, but the, the best part of that process is, is, uh, almost every time we agree and we see the same things, we may not say it in the exactly the same way, mm -hmm. but like, we are all, you know, we're all in the same book, at least, uh, mm -hmm. if we're not exactly on the same page with how we express things. So, um, so that part's great. And then, yes, it, it gets easier. I think you'll see the profile of some of the players when we share mm -hmm. the roster is increasing, mm -hmm. um, but then we're also getting some, as Jordan mentioned, some very talented players who are not at the division one level, mm -hmm. um, who still are very talented, who say, hey, I see what that team's trying to build. I would like to be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the, the name recognition, we'd still like it to be bigger, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely improved for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, it definitely helped. I mean, if you're flying to games like that, I mean, people will take notice. I mean, there's not that many coaches um for summer league teams doing that i mean so like like some of the players mentioned in the early part 
um, there was a lot of intention and that matters when you know, you know, people like to be wanted. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah funny story. So I showed up at, at a game in North Carolina, an ACC match, and I happened to know the associate head coach quite well. And she saw me come in and she's like, what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, you know, you know, I'm scouting. And mm -hmm. she's like, you go to more games than some NWSL teams I know. Now, maybe that's true. Maybe probably not true as much anymore, but yeah. like at a once upon a time, it probably was. Yeah. Um. So that was kind of like, like, I was like, ah, oh, you're joking. She's like, no, seriously. Like, mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, I mean, it's something that definitely it, it does set us apart. And I think, again, to your question earlier, how do you differentiate yourself? I think that's, that's a big part of, of how we do things and mm -hmm. the, the, it goes to the, the values of the team in that like this is how much we value the people we want to play for us mm -hmm. we will go see you we will invest all this time mm -hmm. to make sure that that we know who you are as a person and as a player and that you're going to align mm -hmm. um, because there are certainly times when there's players who we don't think are going to be a good fit um not just on the field but off the field and we we just have to say <clears throat> you know what that's not the best decision for us mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah sometimes that's harder than finding a top player yeah yeah definitely it makes a difference um the collaborative process is nice to hear about i mean and i you know look i'm impartial so we can't talk about all the times i reviewed footage for joe and then suggested play and who how good of players you know like that has to be off the record because i'm you know i'm a journalist so we can't go into which players you know i got him but um certainly you know played a role too so thanks for sharing those with me joe but I, I mean, that's why you always ask me to increase my Patreon contribution, right? I know, I need it. Yeah, I know, I know. How do we, yeah, it's a long drive out to Sioux Falls. Um, no. Uh, so when he asked me for a raise, now I know why. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, but, you know, it's worth it. You know, you pay for talent. Um, Haley, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've had to wait the longest. Thank you so much for joining. Haley's a returner. She's making her transition uh, into being a coach. I want to talk to you about, I loved seeing that right away after um, um, playing at South Dakota State, which of course, that's when we first interviewed you, went into being, because I'm assuming, are you a high school teacher as well? I'm a middle school teacher, You're yes. a middle school teacher and an assistant coach, right, at Harrisburg, Go Tigers? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> talk about, had you coached before that, first of all? Yeah, I've been coaching since about 2017. What ages were you doing back then? Back then, probably close to three to four. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Hurt, yeah. Hurting the bees, the swarm of bees that are running oh, yeah. around. T but talk about it. But so maybe unique that like you're coaching, you're older. And when you're that age, I guess people do feel a lot older, but you, it, it's not that much older. And I'm curious for you. It's kind of like when people start coaching their old college team a little bit. I'm mm -hmm. curious. What was it like for you to be coaching the teenagers uh, in your first first gig like that? Well, a lot of it was actually pretty special and unique, too, because a lot of the seniors on the team, there were 11 of them. Wow. Um, they actually played a lot of soccer with my sister as well. Mm. So it was just really cool to be able to see them starting to transform into young women that are empowering other young women and being leaders on their team mm -hmm. and showing how much soccer has grown in South Dakota since I was a senior in high school. Mm -hmm. too. So just really being that role model for them and just showing them kind of the opportunities that they have while mm -hmm. also making soccer fun, because mm -hmm. I would say that's a challenge as you get older too. Is it always as fun as it should be? Yeah. It's a mix. It's also kind of, it's work as well. Yeah. Um, what, <laughs> were your strengths as a coach? Cause I mean, it's, you said you've been coaching youth a lot and then kind of a different thing when you're dealing with, with teenagers, but of course, like, you know, you're in the game a lot, but it must be a different mindset. I'm curious for you, what did you feel most confident about being a coach and what did you learn? Like, Oh, this is what I'm going to focus on, you know, developing or, or what you just found yourself developing at maybe. Yeah. Well, actually right now too, I'm in a USC course license as well to, have that license. So I'm learning a lot about, nice. I would say the day to day and then planning weeks and then months as well. Mm -hmm. what that looks like, I feel like that's something I'm learning on and building on and the science that goes on behind that as well. There's a lot more that goes into coaching at the surface level that I think people see Yeah. well. So that's been really interesting to learn, but I would say my biggest strength is just a lot of like being a player too, is my mm -hmm. relationship building. And then also my communication and how I'm able to communicate and help mm -hmm develop as well mm -hmm. did you get on the field and practice did, you, did they ever need you did you want to um no i think i only joined really in some finishing activities because what goalkeeper doesn't like to score goals right 
Yeah. Got a strong leg. They never, they never <laughs> think you had a chance. Yeah. You got to get out and shine. Yeah. I will say when you watch keepers do like their training, they have to shoot on each other so much. And you're like, God damn, they are blasting the, ball. like, cause it, they also probably want to look good against each other. So I'm like, it's kind of good motivation to have the keepers shoot on each other. It's, it's a, it's a, it's fun to watch, but, um, and what do you teach in middle school? What is it? Is it specific things or do you have like a class where you do all of it? To, to, I want to know about your teaching job. Yeah. I teach sixth grade English language arts and math. Okay. Ooh, sixth grade. That's tough. how it, yeah. Is it, what's the, I mean, I'm sure it must be fun. Are you, how do you win over the kids? But strict disciplinarian, cool kid teacher. Cause you're young. Well, I mean, I'm a little bit of a cool kid teacher too, but <laughs> I say, I am pretty strict in my room as well. Like I'm good at setting procedures and routines and Not sticking to, to those and making sure they follow those too. And mm -hmm. if we do that, then we can have fun. Yeah. Six, I mean, sixth grade is fun, but they are a little too smart. They're kind of too <laughs> smart for their own good at that age. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> oh, glad, yeah. Glad you're there setting a little bit of an example. Uh, this is one of the fun things about you coaching now on the team. You were, you were on the team with your sister last year. I know she was a part of the club, um, but you're going to coach her. You're old enough that I'm guessing it's not quite competitive, but it's still, I mean, I got to just ask you, I mean, what's it like coaching your sister? Is it different in terms of like, do you have to remind yourself, uh, you know, things about your mindset or, you know, what's it like coaching uh, your sis? Yeah, I mean, even just last year, too, a lot of times of how, being an older goalkeeper, right, usually you would point out what younger goalkeepers are doing or what they could be doing better, too. Mm -hmm. And just trying to catch myself of being like, oh, I probably shouldn't be that mean to my sister, you know. <laughs> but I would say that since we've been younger, I have not been as mean as I used to be, right? <laughs> well, sure. Well, sure. Of I mean, yeah. yeah. We <laughs> Watching her play a lot of sports growing up. And being in the other side where she watched me play a lot growing up too. Mm -hmm. It's like, I need to just reflect and know that she's on her own path a little bit too. Uh -huh. And I just look at it a little bit objectively in that subject. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, you are both keepers. I mean, so there's a certain amount of path. I mean, also though, she's a coyote. I know she's, she's, she's at USD. Uh -huh. How'd she do that? Was it just, I mean, did you ever try to push her on SD? I think I might've asked you about it when I first talked to you, but did you try to talk to her about SDSU? Did you leave it totally neutral? What'd you do? Yeah. I mean, I was definitely pushing more towards SDSU, but I also knew just with learning that too, as being an older sister, letting her have her own path and letting her choose her own things and what's going to mm -hmm. be right for her was really the best part. There's kind of a funny story that goes with that though too. So both my parents went to SDSU. Okay. Actually and my grandpa did too. So we've been I've been going to SDSU stuff since I was uh -huh. probably born. Yeah. And so was my sister. And then when she committed, my mom was going to surprise everybody with some gear from USD and surprise them with a big yeah. announcement. Yeah. She went to Shields and looked at the gear and called my dad and said, "I don't think I can do it." <laughs> <laughs> do it. And she walked out that day and didn't buy anything the first day. It's definitely been a change for my whole family. <laughs> it it always helps when it gets personal. Yeah, that's nice. It, well, and it's you know you're not a you're not a jackrabbit anymore, so they don't have to. They can they can switch for for yeah. a couple of years, and then yeah, they can wear a shirt under it, like keep the you know, yeah, yeah. jackrabbit under. Um, that's cool. That's a fun. That's that's I didn't realize you had such a, a history of South Dakota State. That's awesome. Oh. It's worked out. What sports did your or did your did your parents play sports? Oh no, no way, no, no way. Hey, parents, she just she immediately said no. <laughs> I love that. Well, look, some of us just have to talk about sports. We can't, you know. Yes. Um, <laughs> I love it. Um, Emily, I wanted to ask you uh, for your perspective first on this, but also if um, anyone else has thoughts, but. Uh, there's a lot of ambition in, in Sioux Falls. It's a growing city like Augustana, their college, like going D1 this year, they built an arena. I know they've wanted to be D1 and other things. And then you have really um, high achieving like minor league sports. And I'm just curious, like as it moves forward and we, I kind of asked this, but I wonder, you know, how you see that fitting into the landscape. One thing I've mentioned is like of all those different kind of teams, it's like we're really short on women's teams to support. So you stand out in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Emily, talk about that in terms of the community seemingly wanting to be ambitious about being a sports um, team and how you fit in. Yeah. So th that was one of the reasons why we 
it was so easy to decide to do this in the first place was because the community is so involved and so supportive of mm -hmm. all of all of our sports here and also because there aren't any for women yeah <laughs> um and so it, as as we've grown you know with the first two years so have the supporters and the you know just everyone around the community has very much supported us and as we continue to kind of do the deep dive into the pro space mm -hmm. um we'll just say that there's a lot of a lot of connections a lot of possibilities yeah. um I can't say much more than that, but um, we we are working on a lot of those things. Um, yeah. Just moving into the space that it, it it's the right fit, mm -hmm. and whatever that is going to be is going to be tremendous for the community. Mm -hmm. um, just because that's who we are, and that's that's who our community is, and so mm -hmm. we have no doubt that wherever it is, and you know whatever we do. Um, and with whoever <laughs> that it'll be, it'll be very impactful and it'll make, it'll make a big difference here. Mm -hmm. Sh Sherry, um, sorry, Zag, I'm sorry, but <laughs> look, it, this, this must be real conversation. I don't, we don't press. Yeah, it's okay. No, we'll, we'll, we'll watch the Instagram to see, uh, see what, <laughs> right. what future partnerships may come. Um, Sherry for you, I'm curious, you know, like you being, um, a new a new position of like investing in a CEO. I'm I'm doing great with that, by the way. Um, I wonder some of the steps too. Like we've talked about, you have a great place to play in terms of um, USF, their football stadium. You know, getting the soccer lines on there. I've been there. It's a really nice environment. Something you could play in as a pro team as well. Um, and then, but part of it is thinking about like, gosh, I'm guessing like you got to find, maybe you already had an office, but like you need like office space. You're like need permanent, maybe you need permanent training uh, space. There's a lot of athletic facilities there, but you know, as you keep going with that, what are those types of conversations or, or, or thing? I'm sure those are things on your plate as in the role of administration. Like how do yeah, you I'll look stop you when you get one wrong? Like all those things you just <laughs> said, plus like 55 others that we have, yeah, brewing, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, what, in terms of like facility and like building it up in that part of the business, what, what are the challenges of you looking at that in the near term and long term? So, there are no challenges or only opportunities is the way I see it. Um, yeah. You, if we build it, they will come. First of all, um, look, Sioux Falls is a community that's growing, right? It's continuing to grow. It is supporting not only soccer, but women's soccer. And mm -hmm. when we get these things in place and, um, and in line with our community partners, there will be no stopping us. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could give you more specifics, but I have to keep it quiet for now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> suffice it to say that we have supporters in the community who are going to be by our side as we take this journey. Yeah. And that there is an appetite for this in the community. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you have to be a soccer nerd to understand that women's sports, yeah. specifically women's soccer, is good business. Yeah. And what we are able to provide right now is the opportunity for folks to get in on the ground floor, right? Mm -hmm. Come and partner with us now because mm -hmm. we are going to win that national championship. Yeah. Because we are going to go pro and you're going to want to be with us now for the ride. Mm -hmm. You're hired, Cherry. Look, I, I get it. Yeah, you, got, you guys found someone with the right pit. It does remind me when you say like you're speaking in like uh, in concrete goals of like when, not if. So I used to work in politics a lot and it'd be like certain people, if you ever said if they're elected, you're like, no, when we win. I'm like, there's, you know, it's you got to have a, the psychology to back up your uh your goals. I love it. And, and it's uh, a mindset, yeah. right? The more you win, the more you win. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, there's something to it. Um, Joe, I wanted to ask you um, something about, you know, this, the season is so short um, and you, obviously we talked about you doing recruiting, everything else. Um, but it's a unique role. I jokingly and, and very seriously mentioned, like very few people get to even do this job for a women's soccer team, like and more and more every year, which is really cool. 
what have you learned and like grown in terms of getting to fulfill this role? It's growing so quick, like the the up, you know, the huge upgrade in recruiting you did this year. I'm wondering what you've learned about your own kind of skills in the role and what, you know, it's similar to how I asked Haley, like, what do you focus on trying to grow into more as you're in year three? Um, I would say the number one thing, like this was already there, but it's just grown um, exponentially is trust the people who play for you. Um, the, the phrase that I've started to say is, say is they're the experts. They're the experts on the field. Mm -hmm. So instead of sometimes our idea of coaching is like controlling and, you know, mastering every single situation and having all these things play out, right? We look at tactical analysis of games. All oh, the coach did a great job doing this or did a terrible job doing this. Most of the time it's the players making decisions. Um, and I think when you can create a framework that says, okay, here's, we want to operate inside this space, go operate inside that space mm -hmm. instead of trying to micromanage every movement within that space. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's been kind of like a theory that I've had yeah. um, or that I've kind of started to develop. But with this club in particular, I've had the space to kind of like have it be my little laboratory um, and then allow the players to like, hey, here's here's what I here's what we need from you as a technical staff. Mm -hmm. The rest is up to you. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Taylor mentioned even the icebreaker questions. Um, that was all of our players. I was like, you come up with the icebreaker questions. So you yeah. send them in. I'm not going to come up with icebreaker questions. I'm a 50 year old mm -hmm. white dude. Like, yeah. what questions am I going to ask? That you don't know the slang. Well, We're, we don't know. We yeah. don't know, Joe. We don't know the slang. Can't so, even... exactly. Exactly. So, um, so that would be the biggest thing is just trust players, provide a framework, and then trust them to do a lot of the, the things that, um, are necessary to be successful um, because that's where you can kind of create those healthy environments where you're still super competitive and super ambitious, um, but you're also still helping people develop um, and you're doing it in a way that is um, healthier. Yeah. <laughs> well. if, I can, if I can jump in too, mm -hmm. I, I think one thing, well, there's several things, but you know, one of our biggest things is giving our players a voice, right? Yeah. And what Joe just said, he allows them to have a voice. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not like they're going to, some of them have no idea, like they've never, they've never been able to think on their own on the field, right? And so Joe does a really good job of helping the players figure things out on their own by mm -hmm. guiding them mm -hmm. to come up with that decision or, mm -hmm. you know, reasons why. And I mean, putting my mom hat on, it, it's incredible to see that happen mm -hmm. to, to all of my girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of my, one of my girls, but yeah. to see them grow and see them like fully learning that they have a voice and that they can use it mm -hmm. is, it, it, it's really something special. And it's, it's been really fun to see kind of just doing this, doing this thing that we do in the way that we do it, it is just so different. I feel than so many other teams and, you know, but kudos to Joe and the technical staff for allowing and just letting these women grow, not just mm -hmm. on the pitch, but out outside of the pitch as well. And that is mm -hmm. really important. Yeah. Well, I, I can't speak for how Joe is in training. Maybe he saves it all the tirades for then. But yeah, coaching on the sidelines, certainly like um, a, a mild temperament in which the main contrast uh, Matt and I experience is watching college soccer and particularly some it's or it is a ve it very much is a trend of uh, male coaches in college who coach women, not all of them, but it is enough that you watch and you're like, they are trying to tell players what to do at every single step. And I'm like, didn't you train for a week for this? I can't, I don't think you can yell at every player the whole game and tell them everything is 11 people. They can't hear you. You got to calm down, bud. but it is something you notice uh, when you watch the game. So Matt, I, that's a funny, or Mark, sorry. Yeah. It's, uh, but it is a funny story. I, I, I talked to, when we talked to some of the players coming in, it's that like, so I watch teams at halftime and they're in the locker room. They come out at halftime and I see them getting another huddle and the coach is there in the middle. I'm like, what did you just do for 10 minutes in the locker room? Yeah. 
Okay. Why are we talking to them again? But <laughs> my my temperament and training, I mean, you've got somebody you can ask who would be able to answer that. And, mm. <laughs> and <laughs> she knows you can be honest. Uh, funny story, Haley, the other day, somebody mentioned we had a little disagreement in training last year about the rules of a game. And somebody <laughs> said, hey, do you remember when you and Haley? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, that was awesome. Because mm -hmm. by the time we stepped off the field, we were laughing. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, that he yeah. I mean, Joe needs uh needs some people like you around, Haley. It's good. It'll keep them keep them level. I have no doubt. Um, I did. I wanted to get your thoughts on this, Haley. Uh, some cool stuff with WPSL. It's a huge league. We always say. I mean, their tagline is uh, they're the biggest and longest running women's league um in the U.S. And so very regional. So like we you, you only see people from other parts of the country when you get to the playoffs, but two uh cool teams joining just this spring the thorns academy the seattle rain academy the two of the most successful nwsl clubs um people who watch equal time have seen a lot of portland thorns alumni because my co-host danny fox Oven young um i wonder from you Haley, and then i wanted to ask from joe just kind of what are things like that signal in terms of like you know just the intent of the league and in terms of like what it means for what you can expect as a player um and competition level and things like that yeah, I would say just the fact that the league is willing to expand to not just teams like that, but also to areas like North Dakota and South Dakota mm -hmm. shows how important it is and how much the game can grow when there is opportunity like that, too. Mm -hmm. So giving opportunity to lots of different levels of clubs to be a part of it, but then also knowing how can we level up and be the best of the best within those clubs, too. Yeah. Joe, for you, what, I mean, there's, it's an, it's an exciting thing to see the expansion of like all the different pro opportunities for people. So it is like having partnerships with someone like NWSL it, it matters. I mean, cause it can be things that, you know, like USL, for example, on the men's side really kind of like gained their solidity by, by partnering for a time being a second division to MLS. So when you see, like, when you're looking at the team in the future, seeing like NWSL teams partner, and join in, in the scope of like their academy players, what does it mean for you? Or like, how do you see that as a benefit for, for WPSL? I think it signals two things. One, there's a need for more professional women's soccer. Yeah. Um, I think we saw it last year with the World Cup where NWSL continued through the season. So they were able to sign replacement players. The problem is most of those players weren't playing games on a yeah. consistent basis and even maybe challenged to be in a training environment that allowed them to show Mm -hmm. And speaking with some of the people around the league, the, they're, like these players are quality, but they're not game ready. Mm -hmm. um, and where are they going to get game ready? Well, really nowhere. It's NWSL or nowhere else. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we'll have the Super League too soon, mm -hmm. so that will be helpful. Mm -hmm. But there's the need from a development standpoint in this country for more professional opportunities for women. Mm -hmm. um, the men have it. The men probably still need more, but we need, yeah. we need a lot more to catch up on the women's side. And then the other part of it is the appetite for that. Um, because those clubs aren't going to put those teams in if there's not the interest in those um, those teams. And I think, um, you know, as, as Sherry and Emily have, have brought out, like that, this is a, a great time to be involved, but it's only the ground floor. It's only going to go up. So I think it just no. signals that that appetite for more, um, more women's sports in general, and specifically more women's soccer, especially at the professional level. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, I mean, Sherry said if you build it, they'll come. And I mean, for the most part, when people have done that, it shows, you know, it's in spades and more. I mean, so it's, you know, I, one of the things like the professional women's hockey league that started this year, that's been a wild success, even with an abrupt start, um, Minnesota's team. And that's been just amazing, you know, and it shows like people are just waiting. They, they mm -hmm. have the desire. It's already there, you know, bar of their own opening in Minneapolis, some customers are like, Oh, is that going to work? And I'm like, yeah, it's going to, it's going to work well, you know? And so, um, that's what you guys, well, you guys got to visit and try and they have a lot of Aurora stuff as they should. Uh, but you guys try and sneak in there and see if they can get a, get a Sioux Falls city shirt up. Um, let's get to some of the good stuff here and actually dig into the full roster. I will try to be as efficient as we can in the shift format. See if we can accomplish everything we want. Here we go. I'm happily being cut off a little at the top. That's just fine. And we will focus on the players themselves. But I'm going to get some feedback from some of you from time to time on these announcements. And let's start it with the keepers. I already I gave a little away. I gave a little away. But on the first keeper, we have Campbell Fisher, of course, younger sister of, of Haley. 
and uh and now now being coached by her along with campbell we have cassidy jennings and michelle granja 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 uh, colombian go. yeah yeah i, I am get a, that spanish yeah i am a gringo yes absolutely <laughs> uh so keepers i mean a little of your insight, Haley, you obviously, uh, we know your sister was a part of the squad last year. Um, talk about the group of keepers you have and how you plan to, you know, fulfill the role, getting to be on the other side of it, coaching this crew this summer. Yeah, I would say the biggest part with the position of goalkeeping is making sure that you start with the core and building a relationship and having that core be solid and foundational mm -hmm. before you really jump into everything that comes with games. Because if you cannot set up the day-to-day -day and practice-to-practice -practice, um, situations well, honestly, a lot of training sessions near the end of the season might not be as efficient as you want them to be. Yeah. But the great thing about this core of goalkeepers that we have that are returning, and Cassidy was a practice player last year too, mm. that they know each other, they know how to push each other to get better. And I know and I got to play with them and see what we can work on, how we can grow, and how we can also push our team to be the best team that we can be as leaders in the back as well. Awesome. And, yeah, and then we know there's a fourth goalkeeper if needed. And, uh, you know, Haley will just be ready to jump in, I'm sure. Yeah. I wonder, do you still play, Haley? Do you play in, like, an adult league or anything? Well, I think I got my answer of, yeah, you should have been done playing. So I actually found out that I tore my left ACL again. Sure. I'm having surgery soon. So this is the way it's, way it's going to go. Okay. Well, look, next year. Next year you'll be back. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I love it. Let's move on to the defenders. And one of our guests we already had, Jordan Tenpass, who I had I mistaked uh, – I did dirty to Washburn by misnaming a different player, but she's the one who plays over at Washburn um, in Texas. And it, well, like I said, they're in the national championship last year, along with her in the back, Eli Olson, Mo Malone, Rebecca store, Isabella Bochi. Bochi. Uh, I didn't names. give you her full name either. I'm angloing all these uh, all these names. Sorry to the culture. Um, Baccia and Megan Lampy, Tyrese Zacker. Um, Joe, talk about the defensive crew. Obviously, you have some new people, a mix, um, as with all the positions. But just talk about this crew and how what the balance of uh, this added talent looks like for defense this year. Yeah, balance is a good word because we bring three of the, the starting back four who only surrendered uh, five goals along with Haley anchoring that. For most of the games uh, and then her sister uh getting some time as well so there's a familiarity familiarity but with campbell and three of the back four um and then the fourth one who's not returning um she's in portugal right now playing professionally so we're okay with why she's not coming back and um, that's great for her um and then just the new players um you know ellie is a, a you marry player um so we talked about that that d2 connection mm -hmm. um so she plays with mo um and you know she was someone that that mo had recommended to us early um in this preseason to take a look at uh tyrese is a local player who plays at ndsu and got, got some good minutes as a freshman um part of that big win they had over denver uh yeah. at the end of the season snapped that long winning streak they had mm. um and then megan comes to us uh from the netherlands um so that it's a, a new country we're adding um and then interestingly isa um was great friends with Letty. That's the player who's playing in Portugal. Uh, they're both from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Okay. Um, and I just randomly, just mentioning it, I was like, I didn't even ask Letty if she knew Isa because I'm like, well, Brazil's a big country. Like Sao Paulo as a city is bigger than yeah, some yeah. some states. Um, Quite a know? bit bigger than South Dakota by a measure of, yeah, maybe. But, yeah, so I was like, I don't assume that they know each other. And she's like, no, actually, we do know each other. Yeah. Um, and so um, it was just it was this that connection again so um so yeah it's a it's a great balance um one of the things we look for is the ability to play in more than one position along the back line so i would say the versatility yeah. of those players back to play left or right she can also play she played center back this year you know tyrese can play anywhere along the back isa can play anywhere along the back mm -hmm. um mo can play anywhere along the back so i, I think that's that, that versatility is something that we we look for um so it, it's an exciting blend of newcomers and some stability of, of returning players too mm -hmm. all right let's move to the to the midfield first first slide we have taylor thomas she was recognized as you can see she was all wpsl northern conference last year someone who helps kind of run the midfield and along with her in the middle of the pitch 
we have McKenna Lehman and uh, Aaron. Oh, sorry, McKenna Lehman, Katarina Olschlager, Aaron Flurry, Afton Murray, or Aaron Flurry, Afton Murray, Lindsay DeHaven, Molly Van Meteren, and Mia Bosch. Um, I think I did you guys okay with that, but that's the crew of the midfield again, Joe. I mean, uh, uh, you have newcomers at every position in terms of like what you tried to recruit into the midfield. You talked about using scouting in person, using more, you know, scouting programs in particular with midfielders. What are the type of things you're scouting for? Like, you know, what crazy acronym do I not know that like is what, how you measure a midfielder? Yeah, I mean, again, it goes into that versatility and and how they manage space. Um, you know, I think that's the biggest thing is um, when we look at that, just the balance and the combination of the players, as opposed to oh, this is a six, she's an eight, she's a ten. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of flexibility in this um, and how those players play off of each other based on the game, right? Because um, you know, there's a lot of variance within the conference and how teams play and and what their preferences are which is great because it's a challenge mm -hmm. that means you need to make sure that you have the people who can who have the qualities for a given match or a given situation to match up so um so it's just that management of space it's obviously their ability to break lines um mm -hmm. uh, with the ball and then defensively i think it's important that they're very mobile um what we ask the way we ask our midfielders to defend is <coughs> different than they've been asked to defend in the past um and so just that that mobility and that aggressiveness to defend the ball um aggressively uh and the space behind the players who are defending the ball um it, it are, are some of the qualities we look for yeah in, ter in in terms of um the broader part of the conversation i we got into a little bit assimilating new players supporting new players but specifically and um, you know for sherry and emily this is more your area i'm, I'm sure i'm certain that sherry spends a lot of time looking at this part of it but like the finances and like what you literally have to do to support the players because you, you have plenty of locals and then i know from talking last season you know you house players talk about like the biggest challenges of that and i mean obviously the money is a challenge but like talk about that sherry and what goes into literally supporting them so yeah i'm we are so fortunate in to have a community of partners that help us in this work um we partner with local airbnb hosts and we get them you know places to live and we really help connect these women to things in the community that whether it's a job or it's um, a place to volunteer or do an internship. So there's so much behind the scenes that goes into this, into helping get these women here and help, you know, make Sioux Falls a destination for them to play, but also to grow while they're here for the summer. Mm -hmm. To, that, yeah i mean and it's it's we love to see when clubs it, it's it's a burden when i say i mean the cost is a challenge i mean there's lots of summer league teams that aren't investing at that level and aren't able to um prioritize that as part of their um you know holistic kind of support of players so it mm -hmm. is it's cool to see and cool that you know players are in a position to thrive and like you know obviously when they want to come back that says something to you um let's move to the forwards so first one listed here, someone we talked to a little bit earlier is Lulu Moreno, returner. She's been with the club a couple years. Alongside her up top, we have uh, Haley Christensen, Kiera Harmon, Mia Mullenmeister, 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 uh, Morgan Rhodes, Ellie Shock, Cadence Ramirez, and Avery Clark. Um, Haley, some of these folks you played against last year. So I don't know if you if you wanted to give um, a shout out to a particularly annoying training opponent of yours uh, who played offense on you last year, or just also just a bit of you as a keeper. You know how do how do you offer uh, some benefit in terms of maybe like helping the forwards out from your experience. Yeah, I would say that is a really cool piece of being a goalkeeper and being on the opposite side and being able to share with forwards some intel of even what defenders are looking for, or how a certain team is defending in a game as well, and how we can get in behind or exploit different parts of space and attack forward together. Mm -hmm. But I'm just really excited because there's some connections with um, 
some players that my sister played with as well when she was younger, and now she gets to be on the same team again with mm-hmm. Ellie Christensen and Maya Molemeister. I'm mm-hmm. getting to see some local players in here as well, and Ellie Schock coming back and being able to be playing again and being healthy. And then seeing these new players that we have coming in and knowing their um, knowing their strengths and knowing what they're going to bring to our team is going to be very dangerous for a lot of defenses to deal with in our conference, I would say. Yeah. J- Joe, from your perspective, um, for people who follow the league or if, if you haven't, some things do stand out where there's certainly tiers as any league has. And so the really big dogs like, you know, like Salvo and Minnesota Thunder will at times put up, you know, like football scores. They'll put up like a 10 on somebody and 12. Um, so there are a lot of like tight conference races where like maybe goals come into play. I don't know if you even think to that level of like trying to also do a tiebreaker with goals scored, but how do you with this group and like in terms of, you know, building offensive power in in the conference, how do you look at this group and what do you think your strengths are compared to maybe other opponents in the, in the Northern? Yeah. One thing I'll point out is Haley is underselling it a little bit because she actually had the, uh, the privilege to coach Haley Christensen this past year in the high school season. Yeah. Um, and win their second straight state championship. Um, yeah, and they actually coached against Maya Mullen Meester in the final. Um, so she's got a like little extra bond there with those two players. Um, but from the, the perspective of goal difference, I think you asked earlier about what we learned. I think that was probably one thing that we learned is that we were in that race last year yeah, uh, where goal difference mattered. Um, and we probably focused a little bit too much on it and it mm-hmm. had a negative effect. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think if anything, it's just like, Hey, go do our thing, um, that we know how to do. And like, let's focus more on the process, mm-hmm. uh, and be a little less, not, not concerned, but less concerned about the outcome. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes when you focus on the outcome, you forget the process and then the outcome suffers. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, again, th- just that balance and, and players who are comfortable and different spaces in different situations. Um, you know, I think that's the the key for us. Um, and even some of those midfielders that we saw are comfortable, um, you know, drifting in, into the front line. Um, and Cadence Ramirez is one who was pretty prolific with her team at Texas A&M Commerce this past season. But when I talked to her, like some of the qualities we were talking about, she's like, well, I played a t- as a 10 until this past year and, and I got put as a nine and like yeah. obviously they scored goals. So I was happy with it, but it's like, oh, okay. So it's good to know that we have, you know, a player who like has that, those tools um, in her locker as well. So, mm-hmm. um, so again, it's just about finding those combinations that work in a particular game um, and having different skill sets, you know, like the profiles, we want a little bit of difference uh, in them because if you just send out the same type of player, it's, it, it, Kaylee kind of talked about tendencies of defenders, becomes easy and predictable to defend against. So, um, so again, I think it's just having the players in, who we can um, utilize in different situations that we come up against during the season and then just like letting them kind of do their thing and mm-hmm. not getting wrapped up in those. You're right, it can come down in our conference in particular, it could come down to the goal difference. For mm-hmm. sure. Um, but I think if you get too wrapped up in that, like, again, like the experience of this past year is, tells us that that's maybe not the best approach. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. we'll see if going a different direction this year helps. Hopefully we're in a race like that um, mm-hmm. where it does matter. Um, so, yeah. Who do you most want to beat, Joe? Uh, the team that is playing in Oklahoma City on July 21st. Oh, sure. National. Look at this national title talk with these guys. I love this. Wow. I'm getting so motivated. I'm like just about to, I'm about to join a men's league team and sprain my ankle. Hey, <laughs> um, you're not going big. Why bother? Right. Let's go. I love it. Yeah. Well, makes, makes it more fun for us. Give us, give us a run to cover. Um, I wanted to ask you this, Emily, uh, I'm going to shout out the opener and everything like that, but I did want to ask you just in terms of like, how should people stay engaged with the club? How should they stay engaged with uh, Sioux Falls city? Um, well, before I answer that, I wanted to just say one quick thing. Um, we did not want Stella Spitzer was not mentioned. And we just want to say, like, we're excited to kind of open up our roster to younger, the younger mm-hmm. generation. <laughs> um, I mean, they're all younger than me, but, you know, um, anyway, Stella too, comes, comes to us. Um, she was just at the U.S. National Camp. Yeah. And U14 and we are super excited to bring her in and you know see how she grows with us and 
just be a part of that journey as well. So, <coughs> but in order to learn more about her and everyone else, um, our website, SiouxFallsCityFC.com, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all of our socials, um, Sioux Falls City, um, mm -hmm. Instagram, mm -hmm. X. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pull no, up. Oh yeah. So people, they did. I'll pull this up right now because they went through the work and we'll shout out the people who did this as well. I will put this final slide up. Oh, the, the spacing. I will get rid of the spanner and you can see because they went through the work of making this. So the schedule, um, I was going to shout it out as well. Opening uh, May 31st is away at Rochester United FC, the home opener for Sioux Falls City FC in year three. Uh, June 7th, 7 p.m. versus Minnesota Thunder at home at USF. So that'll be the big one. That might be a day that uh, works for me. I'm going to try to figure that out. Um, but folks, yeah, at least one to get you a second where you could grab the QR code for buying tickets. Um, we love a team, you know, having tickets. Of it. It, it sounds simple, but you look, a lot of teams don't care about selling tickets. They don't care about, you know, selling merch. And so it's a fun when we see everything a club's doing obviously i got the pride jersey yes. uh, from, from Sioux Falls. i have their first it's, one too. it's I mean, now it's called the equality jersey here we go equality jersey i love yes. it part of that's part of too what comes from having uh i know having the players council you kind of like formal you know yep. structure and conversation with players yep, that's exactly. cool. and then um, i wanted to point out may 23rd actually is our first first home home mm. game it's preseason against sioux city so yes, they have, a, they have a new team and we will be hosting them on May 23rd. Oh, very cool. That's yeah, nice. It is extending the season a little bit. They're playing a couple earlier games. That's a team in uh, what, like Northwest Iowa is joining mm -hmm. next year. They're playing some games this year. So yeah, cool. Cool to see expansion. Um, yeah. And there's been a lot of stability. Um, the, the league, you know, like in Minnesota, like they haven't needed to expand greatly because there's teams that are here and they stay. Right. And even the ones who've joined lately, um, have become really good parts of the league. So yeah, I wanted to shout out to, I assume uh, it, it, these guys had some role in some of the prep for this, but to Travis Calippo, who's, he's normally a photographer for you guys. He does, did he make the slides today too? Maybe. That would be our own Taylor Thomas. There you go, Taylor Thomas. Well, shout out to Taylor Thomas also, but I know uh, just my experience has been great working with both Travis uh, in terms of all his media work. Joel Kastanen is one of your, is your social guy. Joel's been, um, you know, at games with us and he actually does, he maybe is doing a little bit with us at equal time too. We're lucky to start kind of working with Joel a bit. So shout out to all the people you guys have going behind the scenes. Um, it's cool. The way that women's game is growing too. Like I see so many photographers at all these games and I'm like, they're able to, you know, make it work and have this be a piece of their real, their, their real gig. Thank you all. Yeah, so no, all, the, all the photos. Kudos. Yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. We have an Amazing. amazing team. I have like an iPhone 10, so I need we need these things uh, to help us have some professional content. So best of luck. Thank you to all. I think we had some really good numbers. I'm seeing a lot of people who are watching here. Thank you all for a longer show, but we're really excited for this summer. And thank you all to the citizens. Thanks, thank guys. you for having thank us, Mark. Appreciate it. Awesome.